Ooh. I don't call it a secret hot spring for nothing. Still, not so much as a whiff of mineral water. I'm starting to think it's just a legend after all. I had to get away from the others to experience it for myself. If I'm gone too long, they'll start to worry. Still, a true man can't give up at the first little setback. And if I miss out on the chance to worship at the feet of gorgeous steam-clad goddesses, I'm no man at all. I'll just have to haul Heine and fight it. What's going on? An earthquake? <laughs> hey. Hey, settle down there, Chief. Looks like the quake's already over. What are you doing out here? Who are you? <laughs> That's a fine how-do-you-do for a concerned traveler. Only here to soak his worries away in the hot springs. Oh. Oh! You're here for the hot springs, too? Sure am. Guess bumping into you means I'm close. Knew my instincts wouldn't lead me astray. Oh. Well, you see, all the hot springs in this area are under the control of the Empire. Come again? What the hell would the Empire do with a bunch of mineral water? None of your business! Be on your way at once, if you know what's good for you. Hold up now. We're nowhere near Imperial territory. And everyone has the right to a healthy soak. By denying the people access to these healing waters, you've committed a grave sin. One I won't let go unpunished. W wait I surrender! The hot springs don't belong to the Empire! I made it all up! What? Why would you make up such a stupid story? The thing is... The spring water here is said to do wonders for the skin. So... Sometimes... Uh... Women will... I mean... Uh... Forget all that! I'm not here to peep! Oh, You're a man of discerning tastes, after all. Huh? Say no more, brother. You too were drawn here by the siren song of a manly dream, weren't you? of this steam has to be... Shh, keep it down. There, there she is! is our bathing, bathing beauty! No! Oh, that's about all I could take. This is getting too hot to handle. It was pretty hot when I got in, but now I feel like I'm being boiled alive. Oh, yeah. That's a shame. Well, I'm gonna pack it in. There's a lot of volcanic activity around here, so you two should probably call it a day soon, too. <sighs> and here I thought we'd found a voluptuous bathing beauty. That was a real letdown. If you get what I'm saying. <sighs> Another tremor! Hot! 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 It got in my armor! I'm gonna be boiled alive like a lobster! Whoa! Get a hold of yourself, man! Ah! Ah! Ah!
great galloping Gilgamesh! This must be the promised land! Well, well, well. Not a hot spring, but not bad either. Not bad at all. A man could dream a dream or two about this vista. Huh? Hold on! What do you got there? Binoculars, of course. How else can I worship every last detail of these goddesses at play? Blasphemy! Natural beauty is meant to be viewed with the naked eye! Shh! Keep it down! There's a brunette over there who looks like Lieutenant Catalina! Ah, uh, love, fashion, when will it be my turn? Catalina? I mean, there is a certain resemblance. I'm a huge fan of the lieutenants. When I close my eyes, I can see her radiant smile as if she was standing before me. Yuck! Oh my, who is there? What did you do, you dolt? You pigs! Toms. No, no, listen. We can explain that. You see, a, a man's fancies are what? Well, there comes a time in every man's life when... Well, what, when you have to pursue your dreams of, um, adventure. And, and anyway, why would we peep on you? You're a machine. <laughs> wow! I'm so sorry I ran into you. Are you hurt? Oh, I... I... Oh, I see. This is a matter of the heart, isn't it? If you need to get something off your chest, I'd be happy to listen. Bottling those feelings up is no good for you, you know. <laughs> the truth is... Now look what you did. You made her cry. Oh, it just... It just slipped out. There you are. You're the ones who were insulting that sweet young lady, aren't you? The diva. You here on vacation too? Hmm? Answer my question, if you please. Are you talking about that brunette robot? I mean, yes, I spoke without thinking, but I feel like she overreacted. What did you say? You don't get to decide how she feels. What? She's a machine! Right, Soros? I mean, yeah, but, but, but don't drag me into this. Are you saying a robot can't have feelings? I assure you, her pain is very real. Oh, I didn't mean to. I can see the two of you are going to need some sensitivity training! Oh, wait a minute. This idiot let his tongue get away from him, sure. But the Ladiva I know and love, she wouldn't resort to violence so suddenly. What's gotten into you? That's enough out of you, mister. You're about to learn your lesson the hard way. Ooh! Huh? What was I just doing? Why would I resort to violence like that out of the blue? Oh my goodness, Soros, are you all right? Hey, you're sounding like your old self again. Don't worry your pretty little head over a few punches. <laughs> it was my fault anyway. What you said before about robots having hearts, that really hit home. And that young lady's pain is real. Whether her heart beats in a chest of flesh or metal, it makes no difference. A man who can't see that is no man at all. Right, brother? Our feelings. You're right! Of course! How could I be so heartless? Oh, 
Excuse me. I want to apologize for what I said to you earlier. I'm truly ashamed. No, you were right. I am a machine. I am not beautiful. That's not true. You're very cute and charming. You are beautiful. I am? Your innocence, your sweetness, they speak right to my heart. Metal or flesh, it makes no difference to me. So I have to ask you, will you... Will you... Do me the honor... Oh... Of going out with me? Why, of course I will. Uh, gotta admit, didn't see that coming. <laughs> It's love! I think they'll make an adorable couple. Damn right. And if they're happy, that's all that matters. Now I think it's about time we let these young lovebirds be alone. Shall we, milady? The pursuit of beauty leads men to follow their hearts, sometimes to destinations wild and unknown. Having found himself in such a place, the noble Saurus gazes up into the sky with one burning question left unanswered. Does a man define his spirit, or does the spirit define the man? Until the day he solves this riddle, his quest continues on. But I had better not catch you peeping again, Soriz. Of course! Cross my heart! I'll never forget looking into the sky above my hometown of Zinkenstel and seeing that gleaming light fall to Earth. It was like she came from the clouds, her hair as blue as the sky. Her name was Lyria. The Imperial Army was after her. I did what I could to keep her safe, but I was gravely injured and left hovering in the space between life and death. She brought me back from the brink by linking her life force with mine. Since then, our souls have been intertwined. You could say we're like two hearts beating as one. That was the start to our adventure. Dodging the Earth Day Empire, keeping Zinkin still safe, oh, and also trying to make it to Estelusia. That's the island of the Astros, where my dad should be waiting for me. But skyfaring doesn't always go how you plan. <coughs> Is everyone all right? What happened? Did we just drop out of the sky? We escaped on a sky skimmer, meant to seat only three or four. But, uh, escape might be the wrong word. I'm sorry. I never imagined piloting an airship would be so difficult. Lyria, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. What about you, Cheetah? Whoa, whoa, whoa! What do we have here? The pairs aren't gonna get this thing flying again. So, is this your airship? Well, yes, but who are you? I get it. You're an airship crew, right? But by the looks of you, you can't have been around for long. A crew? That's not a bad idea. How about we all form one? Ah, you can forget that. It's clear you don't have an expert among you to pilot an airship. If you plan on calling yourself a crew, you need at least one helmsman on board before anything gets started. A helmsman, huh? He's right. If we plan to continue this journey, we're surely going to need one. Sure, sure. But what's with that guy? Saying his peace and leaving out of nowhere. Never mind him. We should focus on getting some supplies for our journey. Maybe there's a town nearby? Looks like we'll have to cross these grasslands then. You're on Monster Bastion duty, Cheetah.
Since setting out with Lyria, we've had a whole sky's worth of adventures and met a whole airship's load of friends. But saving the Sky Realm is not a walk on the beach, so occasionally I would give our crew time to relax back on their home islands. Lyria, Vern, and I were coming off such a vacation, so we decided to meet back up with Rockham and Eo. And then together, we charted a course for our next destination. <laughs> Writing in your journal? Jada, oh! don't scare me like that. Sorry, sorry. You know, you're really good at keeping that thing up to date. I could never stick with it. <laughs> I don't want to forget any of the memories we've made with our friends on this journey. You can say that again. So much has happened since we left Zinkin still. It was in Port Breeze, after meeting Rackham, that we officially decided to call ourselves a crew. Aboard our trusty airship, the Grand Cipher, we traveled all over the Fanta Grande Skydom, tackling missions great and small. Eventually, the time came when we had to strike back against the Empire. It took all of us working together, but we managed to put a stop to their sinister plans. After that, Earth Day changed, and Lyria could finally live without constantly looking over her shoulder. But I have to admit, I'm still not used to being called a hero. All I did was beat the bad guys, you know? We really did save this Skydom, didn't we? <laughs> well, what were we going to do? Abandon everyone? I feel a little antsy getting called a hero. But it ain't bad. Whoops! The plume I had tucked in here almost blew away. Whoa! Where'd you get an Archangel's feather? The Archangels. Now there's a journal entry. And a big one at that. You see, Fanta Grande faced a disaster on a scale the skies had never seen. The four Primarchs lost control of the Tetra Elements, which in turn threatened to plunge every island into the Crimson Horizon. Somehow, we managed to defeat the Archangel responsible for the calamity, Sandalphon. But that was only a taste of the trouble to come. A mysterious figure named Beelzebub defeated the Supreme Primarch, Lucifer, leader of all Archangels. A shadow fell over the skies, making our previous problems look mild by comparison. One hope remained, however. And it was, strangely enough, the treacherous Sandalphon. He joined forces with us to make amends and save the world. With his help, we were able to defeat the immediate threat. But there was more lurking beneath the surface. Namely, the joint schemes of the fallen Archangel Belial and his new partner in crime, Beelzebub. Archangels and fallen angels clashed, and Belial revived his creator, the Astral Lucilius. But the Astral awoke with a plot of his own, something he called the Grand Finale. Turned out, like all good bad guys, he just wanted to end the world. came close, too. He had powers no one had ever seen before. In the end, we were able to defeat him, and Lucilius was banished to a rift between dimensions. The Archangel's story, crazy as it got, finally came to a close. Gradually, life in our realm returned to normal. to believe all of that was real. Sure is. Glad the nightmare's over, though. And that we pulled through together. Besides, what's skyfaring without a taste of danger? I think we could take worse. <laughs> Your glass might be a little too full, Jita. Hey, you two! Huh? What is it, Rackham? We're supposed to pick up Catalina tomorrow, yeah? It's about time we set a course for Albion. You two got everything in order? Is it time already? I feel like I haven't seen Catalina in forever. <laughs> it's only been ten days. We sailed for Albion, expecting to find the Catalina we know and love. But that's not who was waiting for us. Instead, we were greeted by a world we didn't recognize. 
one more chaotic and confused than we remembered. First step to saving the skies, collect your crew. But as we traveled between islands, things only got stranger and stranger. At last, we caught up with Rosetta in the forests of Lumassier. There, we thought we'd find the source of all the trouble, but that kind of blew up in our face. That man, Belial, is no longer on this island. He isn't, but both Barry and Percival ran into him. Yes, it seems he came here to investigate the forest, but he wasn't dumb enough to fight both Zoe and I at once. Then where would he go? Jita, we're dealing with someone incredibly dangerous. I won't answer if you intend to follow him. But he's causing mayhem all over the skies. I can't just leave him to it. <laughs> I should have known you'd say that. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Belial is bound for pandemonium. That's where you must go. That place again? Eh, with you by our side, Belial won't stand a chance. I'm sorry. I can't go with you. But why, Rosetta? If I were to leave my post, the chaos you've been seeing will only spread faster. So, it's up to all of you. First though, Jita, I need you to prove to me that you're prepared, as the Singularity, to be the Sky Realm's light in its hour of need. <laughs> Good joke. Come on already. The battles awaiting you will be harsher than you can imagine. So show me that you have what it takes to overcome them. Rosetta's right, Jita. If we can't defeat her, we won't be able to fix anything. Looks like we got no choice but to set her mind at ease then. We'll show her just how ready we are. All right, Rosetta, here I come. You've all grown so much. You're prepared. I'm sure of it now. It's time for you to set out for Pandemonium. The final battle awaits. Thanks for the practice round, I guess. Keep up the good fight now. We'll take care of the ones who started this. We passed Rosetta's trial, said our goodbyes, and set a course for Pandemonium. Belial, Beelzebub, hope you're ready. I see, Rose Queen, that you have sent them on their way. Singularity. I wonder what lies in store for you. <laughs> Singularity. No. Gran, are you ready? What a peculiar vision. The Singularity did not seem herself. Is this yet another effect of the encroaching chaos? The only one who can save the skies now is you, Jida. I simply pray I'm not too late. 